Now I want you to look on the screen. Please, the book of Proverbs 13, verse 15. The Bible said, Good understanding giveth favor. Are we together? You don't pray for favor. Good understanding. Give it what? Favor. But the way of the transgressors is hard. Just take the first sentence. Good understanding. Give it what? So when is denied, what you have the understanding of is that you have of a certain level of information. Are we together? Good favor. That good favor you are looking for is going to come by understanding. Exodus 3.21 Exodus 3.21 And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not do what? Go empty. So number one is that understanding breaks favor. Favor ensures that you are not empty. So if you are looking for a certain level of abundance, then what you should go for is understanding. Understanding brings favor. And favor makes sure that you do not go empty. Psalms 44 and verse 3. Are we there? For they go not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them, but the right hand and thy arm and the light of thy countenance, because thou had what? Favor. Somebody say favor. Somebody say favor. Favor removes sweat. When you see a man enjoying a level of excellence, what brought that level of excellence to the man is favor. Favor brings and removes sweat. It brings excellence and removes sweat. Now, can you now agree with me that when you are in lack of financial blessings, it is either you are not assessing the door of human entities, you are not as assessing the door by circumstances, or you are not assessing the door by spirits. Are we in agreement? Do we also agree that when you lack financial blessings, it's also because you do not understand the keys to assess the financial blessings. If we agree that the financial door has a key, and we say that doors are not sentimental, they do not respond to emotions, right? What it then means is that for a level of financial grace to fall upon you you must have access to the what the key of finance and one of such keys of finance in the kingdom remember we have one key to the kingdom but we have many keys of the kingdom so one of such keys of the kingdom is the key of finance now for you to assess if if you have your your jota just help me and write finance just help me and write finance and then under that finance please just help me and write on this side write your offering on the center you write tight and the other side you write your prophetic seed i will come again just write finance at the and then draw three arrows from the center area and then you write your tight you write your offering and then you write your prophetic seed. I want to get up to that point. Now, the moment you want to assess the keys of the kingdom as a regards to finances, these are the keys. Now, for us to understand it, Isaiah 45 and verse 19. 
Isaiah 45 and verse 19. Isaiah 45 and verse 19. All right. I have not spoken in secret. In a dark place of the earth, I said not unto the seed of Jacob, Seek ye me in vain. What God is saying here is that I have not asked you to bring your tithes. I have not asked you to bring your offerings. I have not asked you to bring your prophetic seeds in vain. There is a purpose. I, I was explaining some scriptures to some of my sons and I said, God says that he is going to walk with those that blessed and favors his righteous cause. There is a preservation that God gives and that preservation he gives it to the righteous cause. Those who favors his righteous cause. So when he says bring your tithe, bring your offering, bring your prophetic seed, just like we are having um, a project at hand given to us by God. When God gave the project, he also provided a supply. But he's left for you as a human to decide whether to the righteous cause of God or not, not to. They've, that decision is exclusively preserved to you. But the aftermath of that decision is not for you to decide. Because you can make decisions. For example, I can make decisions not to be in the first service. Is there anybody that's going to pull me out of my house? No. But also, when I decided to abscond from the first service, I have also decided to abscond from the blessings that come with it. So when you are taking one decision, that is what we call the chain reaction for decisions. Any decision you take that are going to be feedbacks, whether negative or positive, so I can say that I'm okay. I, I'm going to, it doesn't matter what is going on today, I will stay at home. That day was the day that it taught my limitations in church and how I can manage it. I have also denied myself access to move forward in life. So you do not just take decisions. You also must have to accept the consequences. So the Bible says, I have not said it in vain. You bring your tithes, bring your offerings, bring your prophetic seeds. Some of us have decided not to partner at all. Some of us, since the first time you partnered, you said you have tried, they should clap for you. But that's okay. But you did not understand also that when you decided that, that we are also the other decisions you took inside of that one. That is a problem with people. Now, when you take one decision, it was not one decision you took. For example, if you decide to be a murderer, you kill somebody with gun, with knife, or by coincidence, you, in that decision, you also decided to go to prison. Right? Eh? If you decide to engage in fight with matches, eh? it was not the decision alone. You also decided to bleed. You also decided to be on that pain. You have also decided to visit the doctor. You have also decided to have a stretch mark on your body, either ways. So in any way you decide, it is not one decision. That is, if they open up the box, you will find out a lot of things you decided to do. So when he said, come, bring these things into me, there are other decisions that he's also taking for you. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22. Are we getting knowledge this morning? Are we getting knowledge this morning? So these are ways to assess doors. Now, in a summary, not shall. Now, let's pick the key point. There are three key doors on planet Earth. Number one is the door of what? Spirits. The door of what? Circumstances. The door of what? Human entities. And we said that doors does not respond to sentiment. We also agree that doors are access points, right? And a door can be opened and a door can be closed. We also say that when you have access to doors, the access can also be what? Denied. We also say that doors controls what? Motion. So you can get to a place and then you, there's no further place to go to. So if you have this understanding, 
now now look at the scripture with this the bible said the blessing of the lord it make it what rich and it added what no sorrow so when you decide to obey his instruction to avoid obstructions true or correct so when you leave your duty post let me say my job as a protocol officer is to stand right and then i decide that i'm not going to stand and i walk in that place is empty there's no problem with that is there any problem no but i have also denied myself the blessings that come with that and you know the problem with that does enough you can you can make a decision today that will give you feedback in 10 years time Acts of the Apostle chapter 10. Let's see from verse 1 to 4. Now the Bible said there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius. A centurion of the band called what? The Italian band. Next verse. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house. Which which gave much alms to the people. What did he give? Much alms to the people. And prayed to God always. Next. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of the Lord coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius, verse 4. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, now, if you have a voice and you can see, let's read this part together. Thy prayers and stop. Thy prayers and Woo. thy prayers and you are not yet there. It was not only his prayers that ascended. Something found a transport medium to make it to the presence of God. Thy presence, thy prayers, and what? So prayers was going. Arms had their own transportation medium. But all of them are before God. He said thy prayers... And thy what? I come up for what? Give me other translations. So if I give 20 naira in church, what appears before God? 20 naira. Oh, are we not together again? Don't decide to leave me now. You are enjoying it when we are indoors now. Don't decide to leave me now. When you give 5 naira in, uh, to God, what appears before God? Five and nine. Now, if these things are appearing before God, at the end of the year, is it possible for God to calculate the amount of offering you gave for the whole year? Huh? Is it possible? Okay. Okay. Now, let's look at Amplified. Cornelius was frightened and stared intently at him and said, What is it, Lord, sir? And the angel said to him, your prayers and what? And what? And what? Have ascended what? As what? As what? Before God, an offering made in what? Are we seeing something? They are in form of the remembrance of what? Past blessings. When you bring your offering before God, you are remembering God that he has blessed you. For every seed, for tithes, for offerings, for partnerships you do for your prophetic seed, you give to God. It's a memorial of remembrance that he has blessed you before. 
and our Igbo agents say, Who's your man, Megan? Eh? What that means is that when there is a proof of gratitude, then altitude is elevated. When that, when God looks at, when, the, when your name comes before God, and he looks at you and he's seen blessings, he is seen multiples of your givings to the kingdom, it is a proof that he has blessed you before. Oh my God, Jesus. That is something the Holy Ghost just dropped on me now. Do you know that an offering of today is not for the blessings of tomorrow? It's an indication that God has blessed you before. When you bring offerings before God, when you bring seeds before God, it is not a proof that you want God to bless you. No. It is a proof that what? God has done what? Blessed you before. Look at it now. It's a proof that God has blessed you before. So, my God, my God, Holy Ghost is helping me here. Now, if someone, if you receive money from someone and you bring a thank you to the person, right? To show gratitude. Let's say somebody gives you a job, right? Wisdom permits that you go back to say, even if it's your father, even if it's your biological father that gave you the job, go and look for something and say, Father, thank you for the job. An opportunity you've granted unto me, even if it's your father. So, when there is a track record of gratitude, promotion will never be a problem. There must be a track when God discovered that He has blessed you, you came back, He came back. Okay, how many, uh, how many blessings are there? Because the monies are separated, though. Oh. I tell you now, they are, they are in columns and in rows. Is it that your tithe you ate? There is a column for it opened in heaven. So when God says, can you give me that statistical review of the blessings of Mr. Kennedy? Then they, they write and say, uh, sir, based on our report, he has 2 over 10. There was, can you do a conversion rate of 2 over 10? Give us the answer in page. They said, okay, that's 20%. So, our blessings to him should not exceed 20% for the next month. But if they check it and they say, you are correct, they'll say, how much did we give him? We said, well, for the last month, we gave him just 5 million. So, that was a 100% gratitude. They say, yes. Okay, which means if we give him 100 million, we are also going to expect a 100% increase to the kingdom. So, push that fund to him. That is why this, there is an argument that said the poor get, keep getting what? And the rich keep getting what? It's because of the consistency of activities. There is something that the people that are poor consistently do ensure that they don't remain poor. And there is also something that the rich continually do to make sure they don't return to poverty. Also, there is something a poor man does consistently to maintain poverty. There is also something a rich man does consistently to maintain wealth. So in either of the two, you are going to see consistent activities of attitude that are geared towards the maintenance of that attitude. The Bible said, it said, your offerings has come before me as a member of previous blessings. So when you bring an offering to God, you are not telling God, this is you blessing me, I need you to bless me. No, you are reminding him that he has been blessed. My offerings to God is not a proof that God needs to bless me. It is a proof that God has blessed me. Because if God never blessed me, I don't have, I don't have what I will use to come and say what? Thank you. So imagine... If you receive the blessing and you never came back to say thank you. And you're asking him to bless you more. God bless me. If you bless me, say no, no, no. no. The blessing is not for those. Holy Ghost is helping me here today. 
the blessings is not for those who are looking for it. It is for those who wants to appreciate for it once. So for every time God blesses you, it's an indication that you say thank you. Are we together? Listen, I will leave you with this. I will take questions. The point where you stopped is also the point where the blessing stops. Let me explain. God gives you 10,000 naira. How much is your tithe? It's not big. It doesn't have a problem. Eh? You can easily give 1,000 naira, right? Then that was a 100% gratitude. Then he brings 100,000. How much is the tithe? That's also small, right? You give it. Then he says, okay, that's a 100% obedience, right? Then he moves you from 100,000. He moves you to 1 million. How much is it? Eh? You start fighting with it. You now start a membrane you can share the tithe into different portions and send it to different places. And then God is watching you. And then he wants to make sure that your greediness has been satisfied and confirmed. He now moves you to 10 million. You will see how you will struggle. To... Where did both of you start from? 1,000 naira. Now it is 10 million. You can't, you, bring out 1 million. Do you know what the problems 1 million will solve for you? School fees, house rent, clothes, wears, you look nice. You say, no. Uh, God, um, there is a challenge here. I'll pay you this money later. Lord, God, don't worry. By, by ne when the next one will come. You see that place you stopped? Eh? It is the time your own blessing stopped. But it reads like a charge card. When you get the charge card on your phone, eh? and you insert the recharge card on your phone, let's say you got an MTN of 1,000 naira, or a glue or airtel of 1,000 naira. Now you inserted it. The moment you started making call, is it the time your credit exhausted? No. But you, when you started making call without adding another recharge card, that one you loaded has started reducing. But you are still making call. Now, it will get to a point when they will say, time has what? Exhausted. That's the way the blessings operate. And you now see the guy that had the mind. Now, God, you, maybe you even gave one million. He moves you now to hundred million. Or to sixty million. He said, God, how can I bring out six, six million naira for tithe? For what? Get a meter rule and draw a line. You see that level of abundance. As long as you are prospering by godly means, you won't exceed that point. Even if you go to the other side, you will still pay tight. Go to the negative area. Eh? That is why in that your office, for the past 15 years, you have not progressed. People are marching on your files. You have eat. You have fasted. You have done every prayer for thing there is to do. And God says, no, sir. You have to remain at this level. The reason that you are remaining at this level is for one reason. What? You have refused to exceed that height. Stand on your feet, let's pray. Just begin to speak to God. You know where you have heard. The Bible says, and the offerings and the prayers of Cornelius came up as memorial before him. You know your offerings where you have cut short. You know where your titans you've gone wrong with. 
If you bring them, I will cause the devourer for your sake. I will cause the devourer for your sake. Can you begin to speak to him?